um, uh, one thread which seemed to link both Rena and Patrick's um, papers and contributions was the role of the local in articulating um, regions and a kind of decentered internationalism. Um, and one of the questions I'm going to be asking um, later on will be about um, the regional and about the terminology that we're using to conceptualize and frame um, internationalism, thinking about you know what new terms should we be engaging with and how can we um, rethink epistemologies um, given the new kinds of research that is now emerging um, thanks to the work that you um, and others are doing. Um, another thread that I saw um, linking um, the papers, especially the ones by Gritia and Nancy, um, was, uh, of course, a discourse about the center that is um, forwarded by the critical interventions that you both made in terms of the relationships between center and periphery and how those are reframed in the conversations um, that you um, talked about today, um, how Asian critics and curators engage with what Western narratives critically. Um, on the one hand, um, Gritia, your engagement with this notion of the copy, um, which is actually something that happens in Japan, um, interestingly enough. Um, and uh, Nancy, the way in which um, the critics that you were speaking about, um, Kanna and Batel, um, ca called for um, a recognition of the other in the self, but also um, in a, what I saw it was a quite a cheeky way, um, downplayed American art as being very local and you know is thinking about what does that actually mean um, when we are um, reinterpreting questions of center and periphery and how do we do that um, from a theoretical perspective so I have three questions that I thought I might ask um, all together and perhaps we could um, then open it up to your discussion and you could just sort of grab the mic and answer whichever one you find most uh, generative. All right, so the first one is um, about the articulation of the international from multiple sites or worlding the international um, and the global and that's a term that you used, Patrick, and one that I also um, really uh, find quite useful um, the term worlding, which comes from Heidegger, and which is also, of course, um, reinterpreted by Spivak um, and used by many others, including Peng Che and um, Liu Fan, of all people. Um, uh, so this question of worlding the international and the global, um, we're given the importance of uh, resituating site. Um, my question to all of you is, are we happy with the terminology that we're using? Um, because, of course, in repeating uh, the terminology that we have been um, given, we are continuing to th use Western epistemologies, right? Um, so on the one hand, I'd like you to interrogate questions um, like the international, the transnational, with perhaps other terms that you've been using, like the regional, um, the interlocal, um, that was a term that you used, Patrick. For me, uh, cities, transnational cities are also very important um, in terms of understanding um, these ki new kinds of internationalism. And then another way of thinking of it would be um, what kinds of alternate epistemologies could you propose that come from your own research areas? And I would propose that, you know, moving forward, we should try instead of, you know, always citing, you know, Foucault or Derrida, that we should start thinking about things like maybe developmental art, you know, how does that resonate in different regions? Um, and then, um, finally, what do you, why do you think it is important for us to be working on pre-1989 internationalism? I think it's important, but we all have different answers. So, um, is there anybody who would like to take the floor? <laughs> um, thank you, Ming, for your interventions. Uh, and uh, I think. Uh, First of all, uh, it's, it's extremely important that we find new terminology, as you uh, put it, uh, to examine uh, internationalism uh, from the pre-1989 uh, period. But at the same time, I think it's also important to have a dialogue with the kinds of terms we've been using. And for example, when I uh, was doing my research with uh, two decades of American painting, 
what interested me was not just you repeating the word worlding, which of course comes to us from Heidegger, uh, to, to see from, from Krishan Khanna's location as a recipient society of this American uh, exhibition of painting, how he is worlding American artists. So I'm completely changing the, you know, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the hierarchy of this relationship by doing that. Of course, he doesn't use the, any of this terminology. And a lot of what I do in my research for two decades of American painting is what, uh, you know, um, I, I would say is a kind of, it's, it's, it's uh, looking at the deep structures, you know, of, of what is not said. And, and that is what I found interesting. So when uh, Krishan Khanna worlds, Toby and Klein's work, uh, you know, that changes the whole uh, interrelationship between the West and the East. Um, another term that I uh, found which is, was interesting also in terms of my own uh, development and study was the word transcultural. And uh, uh, I did not want to sort of continue with uh, the more, uh, you know, defensive, offensive reflexes that come from post-colonial studies. And I found the word transcultural uh, more enabling because it allows for, uh, you know, the amplification of the complexity of historical relationships uh, across borders. And, um, uh, and, and, and of course, I think, I mean, for both Patrick, Grithya, uh, you know, in Farina, um, uh, Jose Rizal's term, uh, specter of comparisons, uh, you know, the, the sense of double consciousness is also something that I think informs all our writing. Uh, you know, and, and one more term before I just give over the mic is, of course, um, Dipesh Chakrabarti's provincializing Europe. And uh, what I do again through my research of two decades of American painting is that I'm showing how uh, our artists, Christian Khanna and Gif Patel and others, are provincializing America. You know, when I quote uh, Christian saying, you know, I don't think that American art is universal. It's, it's terribly local. Of course, he's being polemical. Of course, he's, uh, you know, I mean, you know, he's exaggerate, exaggerating. But I think it's very interesting. And then I also, when I, when I talked about how Christian is worlding the American artists, I also world the American curators. Because I do, that's why the transcultural approach. Because I don't like this idea of, you know, I mean, just we sort of, you know, becoming this, you know, I mean, force of resistance versus the West. Uh, I also wanted to show that Lucy Lepard is writing about abstract expressionists who try and dwarf the viewer, uh, conquer the viewer. And at the same time in 1966, you know, just a year before the tra traveling exhibition, uh, you, you have her making an eccentric abstraction, which is about vulnerability and brings in women's art practices. Or Waldo Rasmussen. In fact, uh, after I'd done my research in New York at the Abbey Gray Archive, I was back home and I couldn't sleep. And I started listening to the MoMA Oral History Archive. And, and I heard, I mean, I heard Rasmussen talking about his Native American uh, descent. And, and that, that, you know, also sort of transformed the way in which I looked or studied his approach to two decades. Yeah, thank you, Bing, for the tough question. It's, um, <clears throat> um, I think it's um, more than just naming. I think it's important for us to think about uh, the methodology of uh, describing something or claiming it. No? So I think it's, uh, naming is a bit of a trap for me. So uh, that's why when I, talked about the international through Albano, I presented a relay of, uh, of uh, entry points. No? It's one way to uh, uh, critique the existing term, uh, and at the same time to offer uh, a mode of, uh, of uh, you know, creating a different epistemological condition. So I think this is what should be done, not to find alternative terms, but to develop a different methodology of description or theoretical reflection or claiming, no? So that's, that's one thing I'd like to say. And I think this is what happens in how Albano talks about uh, installative, no? So he, he wrestles with the term from Western modernism, but at the same time 
tries to uh, cast a uh, a local context for it, uh, risking that by saying that uh, actually it's not foreign, it's not Western, it's Filipino, no. Uh, so uh, and then he goes back to the childhood, to, to his childhood, to his hometown, and so on and so forth. So. That's a different methodology of, uh, I don't know if it's deconstruction or putting it under erasure or maybe in the Brechtian sense, it's refunctioning an existing term for a uh, particular use in, in the present. So for me, I think that's the, the task of the moment. To, it's, it's a methodology not, uh, not about naming, yeah. Okay. Um. I think my, from the standpoints of being Thai, you know, and in, in the grand narrative of, you know, Thailand as independent, you know, we've never been colonized. So I've, I've tried to look at it in a different way. And uh, many young scholars, we trying to use, kind of place Thailand in the post-colonial discourse, even though we uh, were not, you know, colonized, you know, but it is the new kind of, um, uh, ideas came out from again, you know, from the West, like Harvard University. Michael Hurst felt like my uh, Thailand was under the crypto colonization, and I trying to look at uh, Thailand in in this kind of uh, way of thinking, and I think it's really interesting for us, you know, when we looking at the ideas of the uh, the periphery and the centers, as well as the the post colonial like decolonization. Like for for me, you know, how can I um, work with this along this line, or if we have never been colonized, you know, how can we decolonize ourselves? So this is, when I use this uh, exhibition, you know, as, as the case study, it's really, I mean, the, the way Thailand's, uh, the connection with the, with the American is it's very, very submissive, you know, in, in a way, which I thought, I wanted to read reading, you know, with this, and the way Piri he's trying to critique the artists and they were not really accepted, I think it's quite interesting. And I want to do more research on this. And in terms of um, you know, the, the, the ideas of the, the centers and the periphery, I think uh, I wanted to break this uh, binary you know, in, 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 in a way that when we we, we trying to shift that into more inter-Asia or regional kind of a perspective. And I think maybe we can find something not like subaltern, you know, like we, can, we do, can we create those theories for Southeast Asia, especially if it's very diverse, you know. I mean, okay. I think it's important actually in the context of both Thailand and Japan to really acknowledge the fact that the histories of colonization are different from the histories of colonized um, countries. And if there's any um, inter-Asia cooperation that's going to happen, especially with Japan, um, that that needs to be acknowledged historically. Um, uh, one term that I use in a Japanese context is um, cultural colonization, um, which um, acknowledges a, a little bit, um, albeit completely inadequately, um, the histories of um, colonization and, and Japanese imperialism, but also you know, situates Japan um, with respect to the West, which has a similar um, subject position uh, when it comes to the you know, American culture. Yeah. Sorry, um, so Rina. <laughs> Mm, the things I can um, answer to your questions is the what's is a bit different from what we what you have talked. Um, why the now uh, talking about uh, pre 1989 is important is uh, in case of Fukuoka or Japan, um, the the 80s the, the the period of 80s is similar to is the current situation. Um, because uh, we are now uh, in Japan, we are going to have the Tokyo Olympic in 2020, and it's kind of an uh, economic, uh, economic or cultural bubble. And then for the Olympic, the 2020, um, the many cultural event is already started to organize, and it's the similar which was happened in 1989 at the Fukuoka Exposition. So uh, looking back to the, the what was happened in 70s and 80s 
is uh, give us a give us a what give us a um, the way where which direction we have to go from now so right it's the comment <laughs> thank you um, we are kind of um, over time at this point um, I wonder well should we maybe wrap this up and we can continue the conversation over the next few panels um, I'd love to be able to take questions from our audience, um, but perhaps given that we will be spending the day together, we can continue these um, discussions as the day unfolds. Thank you so much.